Welcome back to Baku, which over the past week has witnessed some incredible judo, as 14 World Championship titles have been decided. But there is now one more title up for grabs, as we come to the team event. In a format widely praised for its focus on gender equity, three men and three women will make up one team and battle side by side. The winner is the first team to reach four wins, with the order of weight categories decided by a random draw before the event. With team judo long being known as one of the sport's most exciting spectacles, there were some very important guests in attendance. The event was inaugurated last year at the World Championships in Budapest, where Japan became the first ever mixed team world champions. And now they are faced with the challenge of defending their title for the first time. And it's with Japan that we start, as they set about the defence of their title. Their results in the individual categories were superb, and it comes as no surprise that they are the team to beat. After a 4-0 victory against Mongolia in their opening match, of which this big ippon from Mukai Shochiro was a highlight, they faced Azerbaijan at the quarter-final stage. The first contest saw an upset as Azerbaijan took the lead thanks to Mamadli Mediev. He threw Mukai for a wazari to the delight of the home crowd. Japan then levelled, thanks to newly crowned world champion Asahina Sera's win against Irina Kinzerska. Next up, Ogawa Yusei took on Ushangi Kokari, whose silver medal yesterday at plus 100 kilograms surprised everyone. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Well, any score now is going to win this for their country, and that will put them 2 1 up. It's one all at the moment. Uchimata there from Ogawa. Oh, Kokori's taking him over. Tani Otoshi, and he scores an Ippon. What an incredible tournament this man's having. He had a great individual tournament, and now the teams. There's the Uchimata from Ogawa, and look how he takes him backwards here, Kokori. He keeps control of the sleeve, and that look on his face says it all. Tamayoki Momo then drew Japan level with an Ippon win against Ichinkolu Monksedev after she threw for Wazari and then secured a pin. Tatsukawa Arata then had a chance to shine as he faced Rustam Orujov, whose performance earlier in the week had been disappointing. Well, Orujov really not having a good tournament, but uh, holding on here against Tatsukawa, Tatsukawa though, Uchigeri! And he's flat on his back, Orijov, and he really is disappointed with his performance. There's the Uchigeri, look at the drive he gets off the back leg there. And well, Tatsukawa, who's only been brought in for this team event, well, he doesn't disappoint. Yoko Ono then sealed the win for Japan, as she pinned Grunel Hassanli in the under 70 kilogram matchup. History was made in Baku, as facing Japan at the semi-final stage would be a unified Korean team. The long negotiations and discussions brokered by the IJF finally bore fruit, as on day four of the individual event, the two teams of South and Democratic People's Republic of Korea trained together in the warm-up area. A glowing example of how judo is more than a sport, as members of each team had a chance to exchange knowledge and stories. On the day of the team event, the individual flags and country codes of KOR and PRK were gone, replaced instead by a unified Korean flag and a new country code, COR. Korea's first match was against Romania, in which at plus 90 kilograms, Kim Min Jong had a chance to complete a whitewash as he faced the enormous Daniel Natea. The young 18-year-old Kim of Korea needs this win for a complete whitewash. Then against Romania, oh, and he gets it. 
with that Sinagi there. It was delayed at first, but then he changes direction. And when he changes direction, look at the control on that shoulder. He takes him flat on his back. 4-0 to Korea, and it's a unified Korean team for the first time ever in judo, and that makes it even more special. Next, Team Korea sailed past the Netherlands, once again winning 4-0, with wins from Gwak Dong Han at under 90 kilograms, Han Mi Jin at over 70 kilograms, Kim Min Jong again at over 90 kilograms, and finally, Kim Jin Ah at under 57 kilograms. It set up a showdown with Japan, where the first contest was at over 70 kilograms between Sone Akira and Han Mi Jin. Winning this first match, very important for both teams. Nearly went out there, the Korean. And now Ah oh, drops underneath. Sony Surakomigoshi takes a flat on her back, gets the ip on. So it's 1-0 up to Japan. Look at the drive she gets there. After Harasawa defeated Kim Min Jong at over 90 kilograms, newly crowned world champion Yoshida Tsukasa then pinned Kim Jin Ah to put Japan on the verge of victory. A victory which was sealed at under 73 kilograms when Tatsukawa defeated An Jun Sung with an Ouchigari Wazari. Japan were through to the final. But the day wasn't over for the unified Korean team as they came out later to face Germany in the bronze medal matchup. Could they round off this historic day with a place on the podium? First up, Kim Min Jong against Sven Heinler. Kim really doing well against some of the top heavyweights. Just 18 years of age, drops in Aggie on Heinler. Oh, and he rotates him onto his back there. What an ip on that was. Superb stuff. Drops underneath and then makes a readjustment. He's done it a few times. We've watched him drive off those legs to get the hip on. There's the Sienaghi, there's the commitment. And look at the change in direction there to put Heinler on his back. 1-0 to this unified Korean team. Next up, Kwon Yu Jong extended Korea's lead when she defeated Amelie Stoll by Wazari. 2-0 to Korea. Newly crowned world champion An Chang Grim then made it 3-0 after he too won by Wazari as he bundled over Igor Vonka for the score. It meant that Kwon Sun Yong had a chance to win the match for Korea when she took on Laura Vargas Koch. Kwon really chasing this. She knows if she wins this, then she's won the bronze medal for the unified Korea. Drops down, Sienagi! Now then, that's the Wazari scored. Can she stay on top? Just watch how she drops underneath Vargas Cock, and she keeps control of that arm. Takes her onto her side, seconds ticking away. And some smiling faces in the back there. This unified Korean team win bronze here at the World Championships. History has been made. A unified Korean team has taken part at the World Championships and now they've won bronze. It just goes to show that judo is so much more than just a sport. And so the unified Korean team is no longer just an idea. It's a reality, on and off the mat. After the match, the team showed the white card of the Peace Through Sport campaign, a gesture of inclusion, tolerance and peace. One of the features most heavily praised about judo's mixed team format during the successful bid to introduce it for the Olympics in Tokyo was its focus on gender equity. Judo is one of the rare sports to give both men and women an equal chance to compete together in the same event. Three men, three women, one team. Whereas in the past some nations had only strong male teams, judo has stood against this meaning that only nations who develop the sport for both genders have the chance to compete in the team event. A powerful incentive to stimulate development of women's judo all over the world. And gender equity in judo isn't just present in the team event. Before the World Championships here in Baku, the IJF held its first gender equity conference. 
We want to communicate to people what gender equity is about, we want to educate them on what it is and we want them to think about it over all of their judo activities and we want it to trickle down to um, the continental unions, to the national federations, to the clubs, to the universities. It was a pleasure for me to, to be here uh, because um, I always think that women and men should uh, have the same rights. In Kosovo, judo is like a sport for men and I really work on it to, to change this, uh, this opinion. I think we should let our kids, especially the girls, choose to do what they want. They just deserve to be happy. I am full of admiration about what I find here because I didn't find a federation with, um, based on rules and uh, focused on the results. I, I find a family. It is very important the example of what uh, this family give for the society because it's based on true values, it's based on fair play, it's based on uh, respect each other. So I think that uh, the message is the following, that together we are stronger, together we can do it, uh, women and men together. It was absolutely amazing. It was better than I ever dreamed it would be. We had excellent speakers, the audience participation and attend the attendance. We had nearly 160 people in the room. It was, it was just, it was, it was beyond what we could have hoped for. And I think we started something and we're going to move forward with this. On the opposite side of the draw to Japan, Brazil were the top seeds a testament to their equal development of the sport amongst women and men. One of the coaches in the chair for them was Yuko Fuji, a great example of gender equity in judo, as recently her knowledge was rewarded with a high-profile appointment as head coach of Brazil's male judo team. We caught up with Yuko before the event. I'm Yuko Fuji. I'm a head coach of Brazilian men's judo. Judo in Brazil is very, very big. I didn't hesitate when they asked me to, to be a head coach. I like the Brazilian team. They have a very good energy. I never been on the a, on a mat uh, in Olympic Games, World Championships. So I really, really respect the athletes who represent the country. When I left Japan, and it was very, very tough because I didn't know how to communicate, I didn't know how to teach, I didn't know many things. But um, on the mat, we, we don't feel such a, a difficulty. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Brazil's quarterfinal was against France another of judo's powerhouse nations who had previously survived a shock against Hungary after Clarice Agbegdenu was stunned by Gurchak Sabina. Tot Christian put the Magyar 2-1 up with a win against Aurelian Diaz. But after wins from Cyril Maray at over 90 kilograms and Audrey Chimeo at over 70 kilograms, Guillaume Shen had a chance to win it for them. A chance which he took with this Wazari against Zabo Frigius. Against Brazil, Axel Clerget put France 1-0 up, when he caught Rafael Macedo for a Wazari. And Fatumata Mbairo then doubled the lead for Le Bleu, after throwing Beatriz Souza for Wazari and then pinning her for a full Ippon win. David Mora pegged France back with a fabulous Uchimata Ippon against Marais at over 90 kilograms going some way to make up for his poor performance in the individuals. It set up a tense showdown between Ellen Resovo and Olympic champion Rafaela Silva at under 57 kilograms. Silva really not having a good tournament, individuals or team, just looks a little bit out of sorts to me, the Olympic champion. Rossevu now trying for the Uchimata. Now what's going to happen? Oh! She dropped onto the arm. Now what's going to happen here? And Silva, well, was so sloppy there, and she left the arm out. It's going to be an Ippon. She gets the Ippon there. Great stuff from Rossevu, and France go 3-1 up.
With the score 3-1 to France, Shane faced David Lima at under 73 kilograms next. Well, Lima has to score here. He has to win to keep Brazil in the match. And of course, if Shane wins, then it's France they've won. Oh, and he's just gone over. That was brilliant stuff there by Lima. Lima comes in for the Cianagi, and then he changes direction. A drop down Cianagi, and as he comes up, he can't touch the leg, remember, but what he can do, he can drive his opponent backwards. Kojigaki drives Shane onto his back for a full hip on, and that means that Brazil now are still in the game. Unfortunately, the match would have an anticlimactic end as Agbegnanu secured a scrappy Shido win against Maria Portela. Laying in wait for France were Russia, who were watched during the day by their president, Mr. Vladimir Putin. Sitting alongside the president of Azerbaijan, Mr. Ilham Aliyev, the president of Mongolia, Mr. Kaltmagin Baltulga, and the president of the IJF, Mr. Marius Visa. In their quarter-final, they saw off Germany to set up a showdown with France, a match between Europe's biggest judo nations. First up for them was Angela Gasparian, who faced Mbiro. Well, Gasparian wants to get the big grip over the top. Now she's got it. Mbiro can't stay there. Gets taken backwards there with the Ko Soto. And that was really good as she was, actually, that drove her opponent over. At first, I thought it was Ko Soto. It's more of a Sasai. And look at the hands there, look at the direction she gets, and the control she keeps all the way through. Marais equalised for France, with this was Ari against Kazbek Zankishia. Before Priscilla Neto put France into the lead with a win against Natalia Golomidova. Guillaume Shane then defeated Denis Ayatsev by Wazari to put France just one win away from the final. As the silver medalist from the individuals, Marie-Yves Gay took on Elena Prokopenko at under 70 kilograms. If Gahi wins this, she wins it for France and they go through to the final. Gahi, the silver medalist in the individual event. Now then, what's gonna happen? Oh, Prokopenko looked as if she was gonna score and she gets it taken against her and now she's in the hold and she's not going to let go of that. Gahi turned that on a dime. She was looking for the Uranagi first of all, Prokopenko. Then she gets it turned against her and she gets a Wazari for the score and follows it into the hold down. France win four to one and go through to meet Japan in the final. Russia would face Azerbaijan in the second bronze medal contest. First up for them was Inal Tasoev, who took out the Aziri danger man Kokkauri with a quick Ouchigari for Wazari before securing a pin. Next up, Anastasia Konkina at under 57 kilograms, who came up with a big Ipon win against Monksedev Ichinkolu to put Russia in the driving seat at 2 0. Great work from Konkina. But next up for Azerbaijan was Hidiat Haderov, their bronze medal hero from the individuals. He would face Russian veteran Musa Magushkov. Well, Haderov into the attack here, and this has been a real battle. Oh, look at this! He's going one way, then the other. In the end, Magushkov just couldn't stand up. It's been going to and fro all the way through the contest. Haiderov, well, the crowd go berserk. But in the end, it was Tewaza that takes Mogoshkov over onto his back. And of course, the fact that he just couldn't stand up. What a contest, and the crowd celebrate. Elena Prokopenko put Russia back on track in the next contest when she flattened Brunel Hassanli with a huge Uranagi Ippon. The medal was then sealed by Igolnikov, who beat Mediev by Wazari to give Team Russia their crucial fourth win. 
a deserving medal for Russia, who show once again that they are at the very top when it comes to judo. Well, Russia have proved that they are one of the best teams in the world. They have a great mix of both men and women at the very highest level, and they proved it here at this World Team Championships. And so, it was time for the final. The last contests of the 2018 World Judo Championships in Baku, Azerbaijan. France against Japan for the title of Mixed Team World Champions. The match would start with the over 90kg contest, where Harasawa got Japan off to the perfect start. Though he may regret his performance in the over 100kg division, he can rest assured that he did his team proud as he defeated Mare with an Uchimata for Wazari. Next up for Japan, world champion Yoshida faced Neto at under 57 kilograms. After scoring a Wazari in the very last seconds of the contest, Yoshida nevertheless secured a pin. A clear sign she wanted the scoreboard to read Ippon. She then handed the baton to Tatsukawa, who defeated Shane in a scrappy affair which was decided by penalties. France were on the edge of a precipice and were staring a whitewash in the face. Could Gay salvage some hope at under 70 kilograms against Yoko Ono? If Ono can win this, it'll mean a whitewash for Japan in this final, but Gahi never stopped coming on. Can she pull one back? Arm over the back. Oh, changes direction. And she's got it back. That was magnificent. Great change of direction there. That bigger hum over the back again. Hooks in for the Uchimata. Then she switches to the Kouchi Gary and drives Ono onto her back. France are not finished yet. It was a brilliant change of direction there by the world silver medalist. And she scores a crucial Ippon. But France was still on the ropes as Mukai came out to face Clerget at under 90 kilograms. One Shido on the board each. Clerget never stopped coming, but neither does Mukai either. They both the, the same kind of style. It's all over. That Kosoto there has won it for Japan. Japan have done it again. They've retained their world title. And that was a brilliant performance from Mukai. It was really attacking stuff from both these fighters, and Mukai really went for it. Koso to Gary, and he drove off that bat leg there. That big smile said it all. We are world champions again, he says to his teammates, and that was a great team effort from Japan. The Japanese supporters there, they have been magnificent all week in the individuals and in the team event, and Japan, show what class and what depth they have in all of the categories, both men and ladies. Look at the drive there off the bat leg from Makai. And you've got to give Clerge his credit because he was going for it as well. He needed to win. And it goes to show that having equal strength in both the men's and women's programs really pays off in the end. Brilliant performance from Japan. They retain their world title. And His Excellency President Baltolga of Mongolia is there to present the trophy to Japan. And it's the oldest member of the Japanese team that receives it. And what a way to finish this magnificent world championships here in Baku in Azerbaijan. <laughs>